Oh wait, you probably didn't see it there. This tiny thing is the Insta360 GO 2, a tiny action camera that can go places that other cameras can't, but that unfortunately has one big flaw. This is my review. I took the GO 2 on a ski trip to fully test it and its stabilization capabilities. But before I show you that footage and discuss my experience with the camera in what I would call a pretty typical action camera use case, let's talk about the camera itself. It comes in a box with its charging case, which is also the only way to connect to the camera, the magnetic necklace to wear it on your shirt, a clip to mount it to a baseball hat, and another magnetic mount to stick it to smooth surfaces. What is unfortunately absent is a standard two-prong action camera mount. You have to buy that separately. What is also a bit of an oversight in my opinion is that the quarter inch thread on the charging case is inset, so it doesn't actually fit on most tripods or selfie sticks, not even the one Insta360 sells themselves. The camera itself is really tiny. It's only about the size of a thumb and weighs under 30 grams. It has charging and data contacts on the back and a single configurable button on the front. I have it set to start a video recording in pro mode and to stop it when pressed again. But you can change that in the app and also configure a double press to shoot a picture for example. The light below the lens then gives you visual feedback and the camera also vibrates when it starts and stops recording, which is great when you can't see the light. The lens is also interchangeable in case it ever gets scratched or breaks. And the whole camera is also waterproof for up to 4 meters of depth. The camera also has very strong magnets on the back that either hold it in a mount or in its case. The case protects the camera and has an additional battery to keep it charged, though more to the whole battery life story in a bit and it also has buttons and a display to control the camera settings on the fly. It can also connect to the camera via Bluetooth and act as a remote, so you can also start and stop the recording from it when you can't access the button on the camera. The case also has legs to act as a sort of mini tripod, but they are so flimsy that I would not recommend relying on them. The controls are straightforward and also allow you to enable things like time-lapse or slow motion shooting. Speaking of shooting, the case also reminds me very much of a certain video game. Sleep mode activated. Enough talk about physics, let's get into shooting. The camera records up to 1440p at 50fps and 1080p at 120fps, though that only in a dedicated slow motion mode and not continuously. The pro video mode captures circular video in about 2700 by 2700 that can then be cut to either a square, portrait or landscape orientation after the fact without losing resolution. It also saves gyroscope information so you can use the power of your computer and Insta360 studio software for stabilization after the fact rather than relying on the camera itself. In the normal video mode you have to select the aspect ratio and field of view beforehand and the footage is stabilized in camera, which isn't nearly as smooth. But you get a normal rectangular mp4 video file instead of the proprietary files from the pro mode, though those can be imported into Premiere like normal with a plugin. But in order to tweak things like stabilization, field of view and aspect ratio you really want to use Insta360's own software. There's of course also an app that allows you to control the camera from your phone, use that as a viewfinder and also review the footage you shot. The connection is a bit hit or miss sometimes though, especially if you're somewhere where there are other Wi-Fi networks around that your phone wants to connect to instead. You can also edit and export footage from the app, but I prefer transferring via the USB-C port on the case. Which you will have to do pretty much every day, because one full battery charge of the case of recording time will also fill up the camera's 32GB of internal storage. And you can't put in a microSD card. The footage itself looks nice in my opinion. It's pretty sharp and has good colors and contrast for an action camera. Nothing really to complain here, though it certainly doesn't look 1440p level sharp even when recording at that resolution and lower light environments aren't its strong suit. The field of view is also wide enough without an overly fisheye look, though you can get that if you want it. It obviously doesn't compare to an iPhone or something like that, but it also isn't nearly as powerful. Insta360 heavily advertises their flow state stabilization, which isn't bad, but I find it works best for normal walking around day-to-day -day environments where the perspective changes a lot. For shots with a fixed perspective, like mounting to a helmet, a car or a bike, the FPV stabilization is much better I find, because it results in one smooth continuous motion without any hitches. For how tiny this camera is, you aren't really making a compromise with the quality of the footage.
where you are making a compromise though is in battery life, and that is the big flaw I talked about before. A tiny camera means a tiny battery. The camera itself can only record about 20 minutes, yes, you heard that right, 20 minutes of 1440p 50fps footage before the battery is dead. When you're connected to it over Wi-Fi, you can pretty much count down the battery percentage. And that's of course not optimal at all. It means that just after a few clips, you have to take it off its mount and put it in the case to charge it. At 1440p, the case holds another 4 to 5 full charges. Now with the case, the battery life is definitely fine and did get me through a full ski day without having to carry a battery. But the whole solution is just very cumbersome. Because at 30% battery, the camera will already die on you in minutes, I had to charge it up pretty much every second lift ride to make sure it won't die on me on the way down. Which is a big issue when it happens in the middle of the recording, because it will corrupt the whole file instead of saving it. That means unscrewing the action mount, opening the case and putting in the camera and that whole process in reverse after it's done charging. It does charge up in about 15 minutes, but the whole experience just isn't seamless at all. And I'm not convinced the huge compromise you are making with just 20 minutes of battery life is worth the small size for every situation. Using the magnetic mounts makes taking it off and putting it to charge easier, but you have to decide yourself if you want to risk it falling out and potentially losing it. Insta360 says to only use the hard mounts in high action environments, but that makes charging in between a chore. I wish that the camera was easier to take in and out of the case, potentially with a case that didn't fold shut, or that Insta360 offered some sort of magnetically attachable battery accessory to extend its battery life while it's mounted. Overall, I really want to love this camera. It's just adorable and makes you get shots you otherwise can't by just sticking this unassuming little thing to your shirt or wherever you can fit it. And I've been asked numerous times what camera I have on my helmet while hitting the slopes because the small size is just so intriguing to people. Its size makes you want to take it with you everywhere all the time. But the short battery life unfortunately means you really can't. Or at least not without countless charging breaks in between, which really is a bummer when you want to capture an important moment and just can't because the camera needs to charge. The tiny size is cool, but it doesn't come without a catch. So before buying the Go 2, you should really ask yourself if you need the smaller size for your use case and if you can make do with having to charge it up in between. If you want it because you love the idea of being able to wear it around your neck or stick it to your cat, then it's a really good camera. But if you can bear with a camera that's just a few centimeters bigger, it might be worth looking at a standard GoPro or Insta360's own 1R as well. If you enjoyed this video, you know which buttons to press and don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.